All right, we'll see how to install XAMP, which will provide us with Apache, MariaDB, which is an evolution of uh, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. We are right now under Windows uh, operating system, and we'll download first the package. Actually, using uh, XAMP uh, saves us a lot of time because all those packages come uh, pre-configured and they'll open up their ports uh, automatically uh, for us and uh, we can uh, focus on the development more than the actual administration of those services. Of course, if you like to have a live production server, I advise you uh, to install them one by one and to secure them properly because they will be exposed from access from outside. If they are not secured uh, enough, uh, you can experience some uh, hacks. Also, if you'd like uh, to see how they can be installed uh, under Linux, I have such a video in my YouTube uh, channel. So please take a look there. I am installing them one by one. We would like to allow the application to run and make some changes in our system. Because we are installing servers, they have to be registered and started whenever we would like. So the packages are being installed right now. And this is a warning that we are using uh, user account control, which is a uh, property for controlling uh, the access of the users in uh, Windows. The installation says that we have to install the XAMP into another directory, not in this uh, program files, because uh, we don't have write permissions there. Okay, so this is the setup. So we will see. Uh, here, MariaDB or MariaSQL, FileZilla to access the files, Apache mail server will be installed from the languages, we'll have PHP and Perl, and then we'll have fake send mail to send emails, Webalizer for some uh, statistics, and the most important PHP my admin to check out our database, uh, what's going on in inside, we can manipulate tables, insert new data, and much more. So we click on next, and we'll install it directly in uh, XAMP directory in our C drive. We click again next. Actually, the files come uh, pre-compiled and pre-configured. So uh, this will just uh, copy the files and uh, start the service for us. Okay, we see another warning uh, from the Windows Defender firewall that uh, we would like uh, to open up our Apache server to be accessible from outside. So we click on allow access. And uh, now we can also start the control panel of XAMP. It's pretty intuitive uh, to use this uh, control panel. So we have uh, those services here and we can start them. So for example, we can start our Apache server and it will start on port 80. And for the secure connection, it will use uh, port 443. We can administer the server and edit its configuration files here. So. It's very easy to configure, uh, for example, different directory where our files will be stored, etc. Uh, for now, if we go to our C drive and then go to XAMP, there is a, a directory called htdocs. We go there and uh, actually those are the files that uh, our Apache server will interpret and will run uh, together with the PHP files here. So if we uh, go to localhost, and uh, for the port, uh, we will just use 80. We see that uh, it uh, loads up uh, the dashboard and the XAMP. And actually, these are those files uh, here. So if we open up uh, this index.php within our editor, it's pretty simple. We are just uh, redirecting to the URL uh, slash dashboard. And uh, it will load up the files from this directory. So we go to this directory here, dashboard, and we see that we are starting with index.html. And we see this is the actual file which has been loaded with this uh, CSS files and uh, all the other information. This is the HTML uh, of the file. You can see the even the title, welcome to XAMP. It should be the same as here, welcome to XAMP. So usually I recommend uh, deleting all those files here and placing our files, for example, uh, we can rename uh, this index HTML to index2php uh, and uh, create our own file. So it can be again index.php. And uh, 
if uh, we open up uh, this file in our editor, we can just try to see if uh, the PHP works. Uh, so we can type echo uh, PHP and Apache work. This is very simple, just to test uh, our installation. And if we refresh uh, our local host here, we can see that uh, the interpreter is working and our files can be uh, read. The next thing we would like to do is to see uh, if uh, the phpMyAdmin is working. Usually phpMyAdmin can be accessed uh, from the same URL, just typing phpMyAdmin. And uh, we're waiting for the response from the server. And we see here errors that uh, we cannot connect to our MySQL server. This is because actually we have already started only Apache server. And uh, if you want uh, the MySQL, which uh, phpMyAdmin can access, we have to start the service also here. And wait, of course, uh, until MySQL server has been started. And we see uh, the process identification number of the MySQL daemon and uh, the port 3306, which uh, is the usual port MySQL. This is a MySQL daemon. And uh, again, we would like to allow access into our computer for the MySQL to surf on this uh, port and to be accessible so we can see the databases. All right, let's uh, click here, retry and connect. And we see this is the PHP MyAdmin. It has been started. We are inside. We have uh, different uh, uh, databases here. Of course, we can create a new one or explore the already existing ones. What we saw is the uh, installation of uh, all those uh, servers actually from now on using this directory exam htdocs inside we will place our development files so we can run successfully uh, php and mysql uh, one more thing uh, when developing uh, within the exam you have to know that uh, for the databases uh, we will use uh, permissions such as user root and uh, it will be without a password but uh, this will take a look at this in the following lessons. So that's it. Enjoy the tutorial, guys. And if you like it, uh, you can uh, subscribe uh, to the channel.